Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Star Wars Music Analysis. Today, I'll be continuing my breakdown of the music in A New Hope, and if the thumbnail is any indication, I'll be making some pretty interesting connections in the second half of this video, so don't leave too quickly. My name is Derek, and this is Star Wars Music Analysis. Do it. So once the opening scene with the Devastator and the Tantive IV has completed, the music also ends as we now really jump into the story and leave what has served as the opening scene designed to set the stage with as much backstory, plot points, and light motifs as possible. That's why it's such a great move to immediately have no music and let us come down from everything that just occurred as the story now moves into a slower register. The silence, though, is also an excellent way to initially depict the desert. It's empty, motionless, and devoid of life. Or so we think. Now, of course, as R2-D2 and C-3PO set off in different directions, we do start to get music to also depict the desert setting of Tatooine. The instruments being used here are crucial to this depiction. Williams uses woodwinds and high strings which give us the sense of something that's being cut off or strained. And I want you to think for a second about the experience of traveling through a desert. It's hot and dry and you're struggling for water. As you become dehydrated, your muscles are going to tighten and your eyes will naturally begin to squint in the bright sun. These sensations of constricted muscles are being emulated by the high strings which are being pinched off high up on the string like an actual muscle that's lost much of its mass from a lack of water. Along with the strings, the woodwinds, and especially the double reeded instruments like the bassoon, which we here have the first big flail, also give us a sense of something that's been pinched off or having a tiny opening, like our eyes that way. almost seems impossibly narrow. Williams also adds muted brass to this, and the mute acts as another mechanism that's cutting off the sound and the airflow of the instrument itself. The more we hear an instrument with a choked off airflow like muted brass or double reeds, the more we feel choked off as well, like we're having trouble breathing from dehydration or in the last scene from Vader's choking. Now, if we look closer at the actual music, we see that Williams is using polychords that overlap, giving a very closely dissonant feel. Polychords are chords that actually are built by combining two separate chords, or at least the impression of two completely separate chords. The chords initially teeter from an E flat minor over D minor, and then move a whole step in real parallel motion to D flat minor over C minor. Now for you music theory buffs, real parallel motion is when every voice moves in the exact same direction and the same interval something originally explored by French composer Claude Debussy. These harmonies end up being highly chromatic, losing a sense of tonality, and the motion lacks direction, leaving us feeling lost, just like our two favorite droids. The bassoon enters next, avoiding close relations with either chord before being answered by the piccolo with the same figure, but an unusual minor second and two octaves higher, further adding to our misdirection. The chords, meanwhile, are handed off to the muted brass, initially also rising by a minor second before continuing into a more melodic pattern while still maintaining a real parallel motion. Eventually, the strings replace the brass as the melodically moving clustered polychords continue. However, C sharp begins to become a firm bass in the low brass and low double reeds. And while we would want to believe that this is foreshadowing a resolution, the way that C-3PO hopes to find refuge within the Sandcrawler, we are left unfulfilled and in dissonance, like the Golden Protocol droid with a silver leg being taken hostage by the Jawas. But this track goes way further than just representing the scene through its orchestration or direct rhetorical devices. See, this Star Wars cue actually first existed as a different piece by Russian composer Igor Stravinsky. You might remember Stravinsky from my earlier video on the opening scene of A New Hope for saying that good composers borrow, but great composers steal. 
and this time, it's the music of Star Wars stealing discreetly from Stravinsky's own Rite of Spring. Listen to these two excerpts back to back, and you can identify the similarities in the texture, repetitively alternating pattern, and overall timbre and orchestration. It's very likely that the similarities can be attributed to this music having been Lucas's original temp music for this scene, and Williams, not wanting to veer too far from the director's original vision, finding similarities to maintain, similar to how the opening scene can be so directly related to Holst's Mars. But when I realized the connection between Stravinsky's Rite of Spring and Star Wars A New Hope, I couldn't help but start making other connections too. Now, if you don't know Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, I strongly encourage you to check out the link I posted in the description to get to know this piece. It's a staple of early 20th century repertoire and was composed to accompany choreography by Václav Dejinsky as a ballet. Music trivia enthusiasts may know Rite of Spring as the piece with a mobbed riot in the middle of its premiere in 1913, as two groups of people debated the purpose of art and music and culture and society in relation to this revolutionary for the time ballet. Nowadays, it's widely regarded by many composers as one of their most influential pieces as they develop their own music. The loosely conceived plot is of the beginning of spring and the Russian paganistic rituals that would accompany its arrival. It was believed that in not completing these ancient rituals, the neglect would result in an unfertile harvest, a barren wasteland full of starvation and disease, a desert. And so, we immediately begin seeing connections in both works in the relationship of strange sounds and unfertile lands. One of the rituals though, the final ritual in fact, consists of the sacrifice of a young girl, considered to be, as was the concept of the time, unspoiled. A virgin, innocent and fertile. Now, if I said virgin and Tatooine to you, you're likely going to think of this guy right here. Because, I mean... Wait a minute, where'd she go? Bring her back. Play back the entire message. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. Yeah, and while the victim in Stravinsky's Rite of Spring is forced to sacrifice her life, Luke's sacrifice will come in the form of the life he knew and the only family he had. Except, you know, for his homicidal father that cuts off his hand and his sexy sister that he makes out with before learning who she is. But I find this connection to be interesting, and I'm left wondering if this was something Lucas or Williams considered when adapting the music for Tatooine. But now I want to hear from you. Were you familiar with this connection before between Stravinsky's Rite of Spring and the music of the Doom Sea? And what do you think about the further connections that I attempted to draw? Personally, I think that this is a highly underrated track from the original trilogy, but what do you think? Tell me in the comments below. And before you go, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe in order to learn more about the music of a galaxy far, far away. And as always, may the be with you.